Welcome back to uh, Talkville. Very special guest today. Ryan Tejas is back. I am back. Correct. Yeah, he's a little bit uh, all over the place. You all right? I got to tell you, Ryan, I want to say this to your face. I enjoyed Bryce. <laughs> yeah, Bryce did a great job. I, I mean, I enjoy you too, but I just want you to know that I did enjoy Bryce. Yeah. I, everybody enjoys Bryce. Yeah, but, you know, Ryan's <laughs> Ryan. I mean, come on. I mean, right. There's only one Ryan. So this is the rewatch podcast, folks. You know what we do. We go back. We go way back. We discuss these episodes and the first two, uh, you know, hey, it was a good uh, homecoming, a good uh, start for a season four, which means we did a season four. We're doing a season four, which is, you know, thank you, everyone out there. But to keep going. Um, we ask you to join Patreon. Support the podcast. Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Talkville. Uh, there's a lot of perks. It's a lot of fun. It's a family. Uh, join and help the podcast. And uh, TalkvillePodcast.com, you can get awesome merch. The stuff is selling off the, the shelves. Hotcakes, like hotcakes, man. Selling like hotcakes. If you had shelves, they'd be flying off them. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and I don't do this often, but I'm just uh, pumping up my podcast. If you're listening to this, I'd love for you to give uh, Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum a chance. Um, we really talk about mental health and life and adversity and all the stuff, really open, candid conversations with a, a lot of great people that, you know, uh, a lot of great stuff there. And, uh, the inside of you online store, a lot of great Smallville stuff. If you want Smallville stuff, there, scripts and lunch boxes and whatnot. And, uh, the handles, Ryan, are it's at Talkville at Talkville, right? Our handles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yes. The other, one of the other things I enjoy about it, is, since we're talking about it's at the cons that we go to and people come up and it's that little code that we have now that people say and they say quietly and it's like, thank you. Yeah, you, you know, know, when they say, hey, it's um, a whole connection. Yeah, like we were in um, Nashville at the con. Yeah, there was that? this crazy tornado and they made us go down to the basement. It was a warning. It was it was bad. People died in Nash in uh, Clarksville. It was it was a crazy scene. They moved the whole uh, convention, everybody in the hotel to the parking lot. So I was sitting down there with Jensen and Tom uh, and, and, and third never, level parking lot. Yeah. I was trying to make some kids who were a little uneasy. They were a little feeling a little unease, uh, help them out and got them some Twizzlers and stuff like that. Yeah. But real quick and Jason, you can edit this out. Here's the funny thing. There was some kids sitting down with their parents, three or oh, four gosh, of them with their go. parents and they looked a little uncomfortable. So Michael went over and did a Chris Farley impersonation. And the first thing I thought is these kids have no context of Chris Farley. And he's like walking like this. But they like knew I was the silly. Well, or crazy. But I was like, this is horrible. And it turned out it was beautiful. You really helped those kids kind of relax and kind of chill out because they were they were stressed. Yeah, you know, their dad came up and thanked me. And I just I just felt like I, I could see that the they were a little tense and they were like, I'm like, hey, this is gonna be fine. This is the safest place you could be. There's nothing to worry about. Now get your ass. Yeah, no. <laughs> um uh, it was uh, it was a, it was a fun time in Nashville, but when you, like you were saying, our patrons come up and they're like, "Hey, I'm so and so. I'm uh, Eugene and Leah. We're patrons." I'm like, oh my god, yes, of course, you know. And it's just a little extra yeah, it's something. Fun. It feels like family, like you know. Them. All right, if you get a chance to call in our hotline, leave a message, a question for the episode. Make sure you do it for future ones. Keep them short, folks. All that info and more is down in the show's description. If you go on our handles, you can watch on YouTube. Without further ado, let's get into season four, episode three facade it aired october 6 2004 i wish it wouldn't have director pat williams second and final episode directing writers holly harold wrote magnetic and obsession in season three good job holly guest star brianna lynn brown as abigail fine eric johnson as whitney fordham in a flashback that was fun to see him again yeah i believe there was an episode uh this was the episode eric was said uh said was an issue with shooting shooting the timing and all that. I had come back to do a flashback episode in season four and I had another job that I that I had to go to. I literally had to go to the airport that day and I said, look, I'm available, but I got I have to leave at 2.30. Like so I'll come in, I'll do this scene. It was like some big um, like pep rally scene. And uh, and I came in, it was just like on the this loudspeaker and I'm there at like, you know, 6.30 in the morning. I'm just sitting around, sitting around, sitting around, sitting around. And suddenly I'm like, I didn't tell him like, look, I have to go. And they're like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> and then it's like chaos. I'm like, no, 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 you can't leave. I haven't shot you yet. And like, that's not my fault. I told you. And, uh, and so I stuck around and I remember the director, uh, Pat Williams, who I ended up becoming a really good friend with, 
he says, I need you. I haven't turned around on the scene at all. Nobody told oh, me. Come and on. I'm like, it's fine. You got 15 minutes. And then it was like this chaotic shoot of 15 minutes trying to get this whole other half of the scene. Julianne Christie as Dr. Elise Fine, Michael Ironside as General Sam Lane, Lee Rumar as Brett Anderson. And the synopsis is Smallville High gets shaken up when a new student, all, of, all, all it's always a new student. It's not someone who's been there for years. It's this person, he, him or her, who comes to the, to the school and they're there for one episode to, to, to wreak havoc. In the credits, we now have a regular uh, cast member named Jensen Ackles, who, you know, he's been doing okay. We do, the new coach. Clark fights against his father's wishes to join the football team while racing to save his friends from botched jobs. Didn't we already talk about the football, him joining football, and they already had this argument and conversation? Didn't this happen in previous episodes? This is what happens with children, though. The, 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 I like this episode. It's him going, you had your experience, Dad. I need to have my experience. But we, and we did that. I want you to help me. All right. The episode begins with a flashback to Clark's freshman year where we see long-haired Whitney Fordham leading a pep rally. Long-haired Clark gets called out to participate in a dunk tank with Lana Lang, but they get interrupted when the football team decides to pick on the comically geeky mascot Abigail Fine, a.k.a. Scabby Abby. I don't know in any world where someone would be so mean in front of everybody else, even the meanest kids that's would true. do something where they'd all chant scabby abby i felt like it wasn't real i people get picked on i got picked on but scabby abby scabby the whole school it just yeah, it just hurt me ryan what you want your thinking well it bothered me <clears throat> what they said it, it's a tradition that they torture the mascot like what that's so cruel it's so cruel and then when they find out who it is it's, so mean. it's like 80s movie be mean yeah it is but, uh, I, if I may, I want to defend the storytellers in that they want you to feel that way in this moment. Mm -hmm. So they, they, it worked. They wanted you to feel these guys are so bad. Why would all these people do this? And then it focuses on the football team. But the people who created the show wanted you to feel like these people were the worst people ever. I just feel like they didn't have to, uh, you know, they pretty much said the whole school of Smallville High are bad people when they could have just said <laughs> these four okay. or five people just chanting her name and everybody's else like, oh my God, that's mean. Yeah, even when they tormented Clark in the pilot of the series, it was a it was a group of guys doing it off to the side. Yeah, you know, Still it, right. there's always nice people out there. There's always going to be some kids that defend. There's always going to be good people out there. We fast forward three years, see Scabby Abby constrained on a medical table being consoled by her mother, who is a plastic surgeon preparing to operate on her daughter. In an attempt to get people to like her, Abby agrees to be subjected to some sort of crazy kryptonite needle acupuncture to improve her image. She did look completely different. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. You know what else works? What? Accutane. Accutane. I was on Accutane. Uh-huh. There's Ter another stuff, too. It's called, um, starts with a P. Proactive. Proactive. Yeah, the three-step thing did that too. Yeah. And, and also there's like uh, dermatologists. There's that. But people, look, people have bad skin. I've seen people who go to doctors and their skin is still bad. So uh, I, I really feel for those people. I noticed some in, in high school and, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's tough, man, looking in the mirror and like, oh my gosh, can't my face just be clear? Why can't I have a... You know, you just, it's so, it's like a, high school is so hard. And then, then that. Later on the Kent Farm, we see Clark tossing the pigskin like Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite and imaging himself a star quarterback and wide receiver. I like this. Lois catches him and wonders why the farm boy doesn't play on the team. Tom, any memories from this scene? Looked fun. Yeah, I remember it was fun throwing the football because, um, you know, it, it didn't, some of it was it only mattered what you look like throwing it because no one saw where it went. You know, so it kind of frees you up from a performance standpoint. But what I thought was funny about this is Clark's running around, throwing the ball, catching the ball. And then later on, I thought he was going to do the same thing. But he catches the ball, and all of a sudden, he doesn't hear the, the Mustang pull up. Yeah, where's your super <laughs> And Lois get out. Yeah. Uh, their convo gets interrupted as general, her general father arrives to inform her that she won't be admitted to college unless she receives a few more high school credits meaning she is the newest student at Smallville High. You know what surprised me is that he, didn't, he did not arrive in a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it also could have been a phone call, this conversation. Yeah, this conversation. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, Dad. Yeah. Listen, 
That's my dad. He wants me to do this. Oh, wow. We just saved 20000 on a guest star. <laughs> Your favorite guest star. Yeah. The next day, Lois is chaperoned by her cousin, new haircut Chloe, and attempts to turn down an invitation to join the torch. Look, I, I don't want to sound negative. I know I'm probably sounding negative. Uh, I'm first to, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I talk positively about a lot of episodes. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. So sometimes you just watch an episode and you're like, oh, I got 46 minutes left of this one. But there's some things in there that, that are good. And Tom's going to talk about positive things while Ryan and I, I shit on this I, show. I think this is where it, it, it actually starts to begin for me. And I think that um, I'm pretty sure that if we weren't doing this podcast, you, you would have never watched this show. Correct. I, this maybe wasn't the type of show that I would watch if I wasn't on it either. But what you're starting to see here, especially with the addition of Lois, is you're starting to see this quasi-romantic banter. And I see Clark making some choices that he hadn't made before and maybe trying to enjoy himself a little bit more. So that's what I kind of get out of this entire episode. And even the next one, you know, I, I think all, even when what we just missed when um, when he says you have to go to Smallville High, if you look at Clark standing behind Lois, how he drops his head. Like, that's not written. And for me to watch that, I'm like, oh, that was a choice that I made. And it actually is funny. Like, the whole romantic comedy sort of side is beginning. And with that said, I, I do recall sort of trying to embrace the idea that this could be like a moonlighting situation with the Bruce Willis TV show where the banter between Clark and Lois. And I, and I, as watching it now, it's been so long, I can actually enjoy it. I see Clark being more free and we see a side of him we haven't seen before. If that's what we get out of this episode more than anything else... That and be afraid of the dermatologist, then it's a win-win. All right. Hey, that's positive. Positive stuff. Uh, you know, also inside the school, we see Abby strutting the halls, getting catcalled by the football team. She chats with Clark, who hardly recognizes the new Abigail. Clark leaves to go talk with Lois and Chloe, who are debating the ethics of a 17-year-old going under the knife for adoration from her teenage peers. Later, we see Lana walking down the halls and into the coach's office where she finds the new hire at Smallville, her boyfriend, Jensen. Jason, sorry. Their makeout <laughs> sesh gets interrupted when Clark walks in to chat it up with the new coach and ask for a tryout. I think that if a male teacher or whatever, female teacher, made out with a student, they would get immediately kill, uh, kicked out of school. Now, I think then, even then, then. Yes. And they, we just, they just said, hey, this is fine. It's not fine. No, but they thought it was fine. I don't like this storyline. No, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> Maybe he's. Uh, I like Jensen. And I like, uh, I like Kristen. Yeah, it's odd. It's odd. Yeah. I agree that I like the way that Jensen plays this character because Clark and Clark and Jason could have easily just been like, you know, aggro to each other and whatnot. But it's like, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, what's this? Like, I, again, you see a side of Clark being a little more above what most people would be in this situation. Back on the farm, we see Martha and Jonathan talking about her new position. This time she's working for the other Luther and becoming the manager of the talent. Why she'd want to do that? Not quite sure. Against her husband's desire, she wants to take the job to prevent them from losing the farm due to the pile of hospital bills. I get that. I don't know how much you're going to make at the Talon, but uh, it's a long, uh, it's a big difference from making money with Lionel Luther. But uh, maybe Lex will pay her more on the side. Maybe, you know, um, you know, I don't know. Well, I listen, the take the takeaway from this scene is Jonathan saying, I, I know you've always wanted more and I'm not going to stand in your way. Yeah, that that's was, the, that that's was nice. what the scene's about. That was nice. Yeah. Back at school, we see Clark getting suited up for his tryout. Jason walks in the locker room, learns that Clark is defying his father by playing. Clark hits the field, and we see him tossing dimes as the quarterback and uh, as the quarterback and impressing his new coach. You know, tossing dimes, throwing them hard right there down the middle. Uh, the rest of the team gets sidetracked as they catch Abigail running nearby. Tom, any memories from those football scenes and how long this took? Yeah, uh, I probably. I mean, it probably took all day. Um, you know, as I've said before, I like throwing the football, but they did bring somebody in who they could wouldn't waste their time. Like anything on Clark's back is I think they brought in a, a quarterback to just throw those dimes. Um, because as much as I want to do them, they're like, we don't have time for you to figure out throw four or five. Yeah. Like, yeah. so you do give quarterback doubles just like, you know, you had body doubles and things like that. 
I remember in a football scene that I was at, I don't know if it was this episode or next, but I was throwing dimes too. I got down there and threw some footballs. That was the next episode where you're in the stands, Lex is in the stands, and the first time we ever see Lex in a t-shirt. <laughs> Well, it was sort of a teaser. Talkville is brought to you by AG1. You hear about Tom and I using this product all the time, and we have told all of you, and people have come up to us telling us how much they love the product. It is a great product, and um, you know, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should be simple. And that's why for the last few years, we've been drinking AG1 every day, no exceptions. I notice if I don't take it, I don't feel that good. And it's so easy. Instead of taking all these vitamins and minerals every morning and swallowing all that stuff, it's just one scoop mixed in with water once a day, every day. And it helps me feel great, energized. And that's because each serving of AG1 helps deliver my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. How many times have you heard, you should take a prebiotic, a probiotic, it's good. It is. It does wonders, and it's all included in this AG1. It's a powerful habit that's also powerfully simple. Healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated, but just one daily scoop of AG1 helps cover nutrient gaps and supports mental and physical health without a lot of hassle. In just 60 seconds every morning, you know you're giving your body what it needs and you're setting up sustainable habits for the long run. And you know what's great about AG1 is that I'm getting help with essential brain, gut, immune health support with vitamins, probiotics, and nutrients from Whole Foods. I, I like to think of it as a, a nutritional insurance. Um, I know I'm covering my nutritional bases right from the start of the day and that psychologically makes me feel a lot better. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it is AG1. And that's why I partnered with them for so long on both podcasts. If you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash talkville. That's drinkag1.com slash Talkville. Check it out. Abigail heads into school, followed by one of the players, Brett Anderson, the same player who three years ago, hey, scabby Abby, he tells her he's saddy. He's sad that he called her scabby. He's saddy that he called her scabby and then gets a little too grabby with Abby, who's not wow. scabby. Dog nabbit. They head into the locker room shower and start to get frisky because that's where you go <laughs> it's like there's nobody there i mean why not i mean this got pretty hot and heavy i was a little uh like oh hey hang on starting uh, this season just got a lot sexier that's what i noticed having watched all, i'm sure all, the studio all these episodes in a row i'm sure the studio was like we need more sex we need more making out well, i think well, the OC is this the season huge. that smallville moved to netflix yeah, <laughs> yeah. or sex flex <laughs> as they kiss we see some sort of decomposition run across brett's face and this scares Abigail. She decides to leave. Brett chases after, calling her names until he catches a glimpse of himself in the mirror and he sees his face decaying, frightened. He runs out of the school and straight into Lois's windshield. I will say this. This made me creepy. laugh out loud. If you listen to him cry. What'd you do to me? No, my face. And he's like, oh, my face. Oh, my, oh my face. Yeah, my face. It was the worst. But I, it, it did make it clear that that's what this guy, that's his operating procedure is his face, like what he looks like. He's good looking. That's all he has. It was like, oh my Lord, I'm not making fun of the actor. I am. Um, no, it was a weird expression. It made me laugh. I think it was ADR. Might not have even been him. Oh, probably. Uh, do you do you feel that this is a this is a death count? Like did, did no, Rose kill him? I don't think he died. I think he no. just, no. He looks pretty dead to me. Maybe. Not moving. I think it's just what he sees, but not what everyone else sees. Y yeah, well, that's the whole that, but, point. But did Lois hit like kill a guy with her car? Is that what you're asking? That's that's the direct question. Yes. Did Lois kill a guy? No, no, we can't assume that, can we? <laughs> As Brett is getting stretchered away, Clark shows up to see what happened instead of admitting objection, Your Honor. 
instead of admitting fault for being on her phone, Lois chucks this up to Brett losing it, it mentally with the stress of the new football season. And Lois and Clark head into the locker room to find out what happened. As Lois gets gawked by the entire team, Clark finds evidence of Abigail being in the showers. And as Lana moves into her new apartment, Lex prepares to open the talon and finds mysterious ancient mythology books in her possession. What? She brushes it off and pokes at him for being nostalgic of their time as business partners. So what? going back just a second, when Lois barges into the locker room, I know that that's not normal. But did you notice that every single guy in there thought that she was there for them? Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a really toxic environment in there. Like, I thought that was a little unfair, is all I'm saying. Football players are just getting, I mean, they're it's, I mean, being it's, played as just anuses. I mean, every football player has ever been sort of... Uh, well, this is before we knew about small CTE. Note. What's that? <laughs> all, the, all the concussions. Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know... How many concussions have you had? I've had a few, yes. I just... No. I don't know. I, uh, I, I felt myself for the first time in this entire series thus far kind of like not caring and I felt like I just I felt like I just didn't give a crap about much. Even Lex, I was like, he's getting a little soft. He's apologizing in episodes coming up. He uh, he's like, you know, you know, trying to make things right. And he's like, just you know, I look like I'm, I got a tan or something this year. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not crazy about like the direction right now in episode three. And I'm hoping something will bring me back around that will get me back into the thick of what Smallville really is because this episode, and I'm not saying it's the worst, I'm saying, because there's some good things, it just seems kind of chaotically uninspiring. Can I can I give you some sort of su supportive suggestion about Lex? Please. What we're ha what, what's happening here is Clark is moving on, Lana's moving on, Lex is smart enough to see this, and he's sort of taking a step back and letting things move He's helping all the characters do their little moves while he still stays ahead of them. So it's kind of brilliant. It's not fast paced. You know what I mean? There's all right. no, there's no pace. I can buy it, that. Lex is like, I see you, Clark. You need some space. Lana. All right. Let me just. And I see him navigating it in a cool way. Okay. No, I, I, I dig that. News moves fast in Smallville because when Clark returns home, he gets an earful from his dad who's upset that he's playing football clark says it's not fair that he's missing out on the core memories that made high school so memorable to his dad lana leaves to visit dr fine for a consultation to get her tattoo removed she learns that the symbol was not made of ink but was likely branded somehow and that she will need a skin graft for the removal did you guys already talk about the placement of this particular tattoo on lana tram stamp yeah yeah they just they just wanted an excuse uh, I guess so. I don't know. That whole thing, Ryan, you missed where I was I was furious why she's even involved. Why isn't she in Paris and 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 all of a sudden these symbols are appearing? Like what is she, what is she doing? Don't What it, is the pay and what is the possible payoff? I, I have no idea. Maybe it's genius, yeah. but right now it seems like far fetched and bananas, frankly. <laughs> As Dr. Fine's admiring uh Lana's face, Abigail walks in frantically telling her mother what happened to Brett. Her mom says it was justice for uh, all the bullying and suggests that Lana should be next. Next, Lana heads back to Smallville High after hours to explore the old drama room with boyfriend coach Jason. He starts to ask Lana what she knows about Clark. Lana says it's strange that Clark decided to actually open up for once. Jason then gets vulnerable, saying how weird it is being put in a position where he's the one giving players advice because he feels not far from uh, removed from being one. Conveniently, Jason blindfolds Lana to surprise her with her birthday present and leaves the room. Instead of her boyfriend, Lana is then greeted with a deathly kiss by Abigail. That this did this really didn't add up. I respect the fact that they had to do it this way. But like he left the room for like 80 seconds. Like, where was he going? What was he doing? Yeah. Like, it was just a little weird. Yeah. Lana pulls out the blindfold, sees her decomposing face reflection in the mirrors that fill the room, one of which falls on her and lands her in the hospital again. So <laughs> here we are inside the room. Inside her room, Lex plays a, pays a visit to check on Lana. He runs into Jason and recognizes Teague for his father's law firm. I like this moment. It's a very subtle moment, but this is always something that I was like, 
even when when T and Lana were in Paris, and I just knew there was something more to him than like this was all set up on his side. And Lex is the first one who clocks it. So yeah, there but you, go. you know what's weird? You got to be smarter than this. First of all, they meet in Paris. So it's a setup, like he's going to find her and meet her and do all these things. But the if how do they not just change his last name? So Lex wouldn't know if there was any relation to the Teague family or anything. If this is a build up to Rogers. something, this is stupidity <laughs> 105. It's just, it, you know, it's just like. All right, you got me there. You yeah, got me there. it is. Lex goes on to ask about his relationship with Lana, suspicious that it's more than just coach and student. Clark and Chloe show up to pay a visit. Clark gives Chloe the lowdown about Lana's serotonin levels, and we have to explain what serotonin is. And Chloe says that Lana is having LSD-like hallucinations for some reason. Chloe puts the pieces together that Lana and Brett's breakdowns are somehow related to Abigail. <laughs> we then cut to a scene where Lois is hot on the trail, placing a consultation appointment with Dr. Fine. She shows up for the appointment, shocked by some of the answers that the plastic surgeon is giving to a high school uh, high schooler. As Lois asks to get some procedure that Abigail received, Dr. Fine hears a tape recording going off in Lo Lois's bag. She attempts to make a dramatic exit. However, Dr. Fine nabs her by the hair, jabs her in the neck with a syringe, knocking her unconscious. It's a lot, lot in one scene to sort of swallow. Very... It's just like you're going to stick a woman. I mean, who cares if she heard that? She's going to risk injecting this woman with a syringe. It's just, you know what it is? Incredulous. It's just everything I'm watching is mostly <laughs> incredulous and hard to wrap my. I, I, I'm one, like, you let a few things go, you know? You let a few things go. It's just, it, everything just seems like it's like, oh my God, really? Gosh, guys, I'm sorry. Today's word is incredulous. Today's word is incredulous. <laughs> the first three was last was week's. I think it was last week's word too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, things are gonna pay off here. There's there's gonna be a payoff. I have faith. There must be right. There's a payoff. The next day, Clark and Chloe <laughs> show up to the torch to learn more about the the potential cures for Lana's serotonin searches and see that Lois is already one step ahead of them. Good for her. We cut back Ugh. to Dr. Fine, who is Lois tied down to a table. She threatens her and tells her that she will find out what it was like for Abigail to be bullied all those years, seemingly attempting to make Lois scabby in some sort of reverse surgical procedure. Now, the full body cast of kryptonite syringes begins to drop down towards Lois. Before, however, she can they can make her ugly, Clark rushes in to save the day, lifting the cast, oh. exposing himself to leak kryptonite gas. Allows This allows Dr. Fine to knock him out, but then gives Lois the opportunity to do another kick in the face. And as Lois drags Clark out, she gives another donkey kick to Dr. Fine. <laughs> and we get the first curse word in Smallville. She utters off camera, ADR, get off, bitch. Yeah, she did. I don't know. I just... Th th Lana has, or, or I'm sorry, uh, Lois has information on the doctor. The doctor sticks with the needle and says, you know what? I'm going to make you ugly. That's the punishment? <sighs> like, I don't get the tension of it. Like, it's this is when you start, you know, digging a, digging a hole somewhere and you put somebody in. Because then she's, she still has the information she's going to have about the doctor. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't add up to me. Yeah, well, it doesn't add up to many. The next day we see Lana has recovered and is reconciling things that... With Jason and the talent, she opens up about thinking that her identity was tied to her beauty as a cheerleader when she was a freshman, not wanting that to be what her and Jason's relationship is based on. And Clark returns home and tells his father that he's tired of living his life on the sidelines. Even though Jonathan doesn't want him to, he's still going to play for the team. The two reconcile as Jonathan drops a 30-yard bomb in a wide shot to Clark, running an out route. All in one take, Tom? It, it was one take. That was cool. So... I got to tell you, I don't remember if this was me or not, but I hope it was because that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you dunked it. It was you. I mean, to catch the ball and to dunk it, I, I just don't remember, but I really hope that I was I think me. you did it. Because if that was me, then the dunk was a surprise. I bet they lowered I the rim for you. No, I don't think so. No. I don't know. I, I actually rewound that about seven <laughs> times trying to figure out if it was actually me or not. But I don't know who else it would be. But it could have been Chris. I mean, Chris has skills, but 
I watched it seven it times. It was you. He like, it was you. I, I like, think it was you. I know your I body. It, that didn't sound I hope, right. But I, I know it was his body. <laughs> Back at Smallville High, we see Lois admiring her at first expose. Chloe congratulates her, and the two go join the pep rally outside. Lois participates in the fun and ends up sinking Clark in the dunk tank. That was a cute moment. And as the two share a wholesome slow-mo moment, Chloe looks uncomfortably. A new triangle has emerged. I like that ending because you, you, yeah. I remember sitting in that dunk tank and just convincing myself there's no way that Erica or Lois is going to be able to throw this. You know what I mean? You just put yourself in that mode so you can be surprised. And then when I got out and, you know, she comes up and I do the hair thing and I was thinking about like what Tom Cruise would do in Top Gun. I don't know. But that was a good um, moment. I like that moment. I really like that moment worked. when you kind of do the thing with your and, hair and it's playful yeah. and cute and you're flirting and she's flirting for, you know, a uh, pseudo high school girl. And uh, yeah. And then Chloe watching on. And then they on. cut to Chloe. It was sad. Like, well, so, it's feel, also her yeah. cousin. It's weird. It's like, oh my gosh, he wouldn't give me a chance. And now he's flirting with my cousin who comes in the town. It's kind of like, it's, it, you know, I understand her feeling there. It's like, oh. But you know what? How about this? How about, you know, he's just not interested in you. So don't cock block. <laughs> well, we Highlight will get into that next. We will get into that in the next episode, by the way. Just highlights, like, lowlights. Uh, there weren't many it. highlights for me. Dunk tank, maybe. But uh, no, honestly, I'm going to say. Clark catching, the Clark catching the ball and dunking yes, it. Yes, Clark yeah, catching like the that. ball and dunking it. So visuals, mm -hmm. there, was, there was a good 18 seconds of good stuff. Um, <laughs> I think this probably could be my least favorite episode of small though well wow. it's one of them because everything <laughs> seems just stupid it's like it's i love the writers and they're all genius and i know it's hard but this is episode three of the fourth season the you know you should have it shouldn't be good like in episode seven or eight not episode three and i just felt like the writing was just all over the place it was like it nothing made sense and the fact that someone approved this stuff to me, was baffling. Ryan, do you concur? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it all feels stupid. It just felt silly. The same, like it felt. It felt like like we were doing like some season one stuff in season four. Yeah, and I thought we had sort of moved past. Like in a lot of ways, it has moved past that. Like it feels like. Um, I mean, because everyone's getting older and everyone's you know acting chops are like leveled up, and it so it feels more mature. Um, and yeah. it's also very noticeably like because i watched all the other episodes uh before this too like it's just a lot uh smokier <laughs> well i i will say this i will say that the actors all did a good job i really felt like there was fun there they gave life to these scenes they made the material better than it was and uh so i really appreciated that and there were some things that looked good um it just it felt like, hey, let's make the bad guys really bad, as bad as they could possibly be. Let's everything. Uh, yeah, it was. It just it. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know. Maybe I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but it was I watched this. Inauthentic. I watched it. Yeah. It felt like if this was the show to sell Smallville, this show gets canceled after this episode. But. Yeah. Uh, again. The, the characters I still like, but this definitely to me, it kind of sometimes hurts the characters when stories are so unbelievable. And, um, you know, and I think what really irked me is the fact that the next episode is also a cheerleading episode. It's like back to back crap. And uh, I'll be a little nicer next episode, but I, I, you know, I'm trying to pick what I, you know, there were some nice moments, but I just, what didn't happened look. to Abigail, by the way, anybody, did I miss a scene? Who knows what happened to her did mom? She just, we, or her mom, we never seen it. Right? Yeah. What is it that um, uh, Ask me this, Tom, why can Lois <laughs> and Lana and Chloe, every girl on Smallville know how to kick ass and do these amazing drop kicks and, and knock out like, uh, uh, you know, in the, from the helicopter of the other episode where she knocks these guys out and she's like the special ops it's guys. Just, and yeah. I'm not saying it's women, but it's everybody in Smallville. It's like everybody can fight except Pete Ross. 
Well, and Lex likes to get hit in the back of and the Lex head. And Lex gets the shit beat out of him. Yeah, he doesn't really yeah. fight. So I, I love girl power. I'm the first one to say it, but it seems like all the girls are tough and the boys are kind of wimps, <laughs> which is kind of cool, I guess. But it's I don't know how believable that is. Um Interesting things of note. Interesting. Would you would you prefer to, would you prefer to just skip past interesting the interesting things of note? No, because I want to find out what Bryce finds interesting. <laughs> Two references to Lois's poor spelling, which is often present in versions of her in different media. Oh yeah. When this episode originally aired, Lois Lane's plastic surgery article was featured on the old WB website. Lionel Luther does not appear in this episode. Not that interesting, Bryce. Um. <laughs> At what point would Lionel show up to this story? <laughs> like, like Lex on get the football out of here. field, get out! Um, oh my god, he's ripped. Yeah, by the way, he is ripped. Just smoking hot, John Glover. Yeah, smoking Glover. We're gonna go to the hotline. Talk this is uh, hotline. some of my favorite, my favorite part where I get to hear from you guys, and I want to see what you guys thought. Let's see what Lila has to say. I bet she's gonna be very positive. What do you think, Ryan? I think so. Lila's adorable. She Hi, has a talk I'm Lila from Ohio. The episode facade marks the first of 52 times Lois Lane was knocked out. Lois has the most knockouts of the scenes, followed by Lex at 51 times and Lana at 47 times. I've heard the story about Laura passing out in her harness, but I was wondering, has any cast or crew members passed out or been knocked out on set? Thank you. Yeah, I love you. Thank <laughs> you for that. Um, I don't think anybody's been knocked out. Um, but uh we had a stunt guy knocked out once with a shield um he came he he came this is a couple of seasons from now it was just you know somebody went like this and he leaned forward and that that was kind of he just went down um who was knocked a out a stunt guy once chris Sarah got hurt in a season or two really bad oh, life changing yeah, almost died uh, laura vandervoort passed out. passed out you know in a wire rig um but we were we were we were a very safe conscious set. I will say that. Yeah, here we go. And you know who looked over that? Rob Mayer. Remember Rob Mayer? Yeah, he did. He was Rob a very was safe great. guy. Great stunt supervisor. Yeah. Hi, Tom and Michael. My name is Moni. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. One of my absolute all time favorite Smallville moments is in this episode, which features a dunk tank scene with Lois and Clark. The scene really starts to show the attraction between the two of them, as Chloe notices from afar. The show seemed to be setting the two of them to start their relationship, and instead, the show fell back into the exhausted storyline of Lana and Clark. My question is were they supposed to, as in the show writers, were they supposed to start to switch to Clark and Lois romance from there? And do you think they drew out the Lana Clark romance way too long? Thank you so much. I love the show. Yes, Bye. I think they drew it out too long, three seasons, and uh, it's still to. dragging out, but it's a little better now. It's the, they're moving on, so that's nice. So that's a good thing that the writers did is is move the story along. Um, uh, Wait, you're saying the tel you're saying the television series drag out romantic relationships? Wow, I know. But 22 episodes, it was 66 episodes so far, 67. But you know, we got tired of it by the end for sure. I called it out, but uh, I like the dunk tank scene. I, I think that was one of the only I highlights will say of the that show. That dunk tank scene was—I literally remember that being one take. I mean, obviously, because the reset on that is like an hour. Yep. Yeah. But but you heard how upset um, she was. She said the exhausting freak of the week or whatever kind of kind of shit. So she she was with me on that one. Here's Caroline. Let's see what Caroline has to say. I bet uh, it's the dunk take she liked. Hi, hey guys. This is Carolyn from Springfield, Missouri. It's weird that Lex walked in on Jason when he was sitting by Lana in the hospital and he introduced himself. He didn't notice that he'd already knew him because he knew Jason's mother, so he had to have known Jason. I just thought it was weird. Thanks. Well, it Bye. was weird, no, but you know what? Maybe we don't know that. Maybe Lex is playing a little game. You know, Lex is playing a game like, I, I've never met you, but he has. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know what's up with this Jason Teague. We'll have to see. Here's Britt. Britt, what you got for us? Hi, this is Britt from Kansas City. Tom, you catch the football and then slam it into the basketball hoop. Was that on purpose or a random act? It seemed like John Schneider was genuinely surprised. You know, it's funny. We just talked about it in the episode. I watched it sometimes. I went back and watched it since we talked just now. And I think you're right. If, if you watch Schneider's reaction... It makes me feel like that was me. 
I think it was a surprise. I think it was you, 100%. Yeah. I, I, I put money on it. Here's Jen. Jen? Come on, Jen. Hey, guys. Jen T. here from Maine. I just watched Facade, and I'm kind of perplexed as to why Eric Johnson was featured in this episode. The storyline didn't really require his presence, and it certainly didn't move the story forward in any way. Yep. I'm just curious as to what you both think of his appearance, why you think it may have been warranted. What would your expectations be for someone returning to a show that they were once on? And should their I think return it's, no, I, their own Listen, story it was a tool, it Thanks, was a guys, tool that instantly you know that we just went back in time. I thought it was great. Yeah. Who else would be there to establish the time period? The little He's the perfect lower person third that says that. it's 2001. Yeah. <laughs> How about you just say 10 years ago or five years That's, ago or one year ago, well, three years ago, whatever it was. Did you need Eric Johnson? It was kind of nice. You know, it was kind of nice. You know, it, I liked it, it. It was nice of them. To it was nice to see him. It was if, nice. If they're yeah. going to do a flashback, it was, it was nice I of agree, them to guys. Throw it. Tom, you're right. And uh, Jen from Maine sent me gifts. Was, so thank you, Jen from Maine. It was effective. That was Jen yeah, who sent I, you gifts? Yeah. I said, like I got some main themed gifts. Oh, yes. Merry Christmas, Ryan. <laughs> Maple syrup. This is John. John Ryan. This is John from Texas. My question's for Ryan. When the show originally aired, I didn't start watching until season six. Never felt invested in Clark and Alana. But Ryan, you've watched from the beginning chronologically. So for you, is it still Clark and Lana, or given the last scene in Facade, do you see the potential for the uh, for Clark with the fun and sexy Lois? Thanks, bye. Thanks. What buddy. if a beautiful his you know his his voice and demeanor? I didn't expect such a heartfelt question. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, what would you say? Oh, uh, yeah. No, I'm kind of done with the uh, the Clark and Lana. I think it's been exhausted. Um, I think it was. <laughs> I think it was kind of interesting. No, because like. Erica Durant is such a spark. There is a spark, uh, like a much mm-hmm. needed sort of just fire was lit into the the show now, and there there's like a reason for Clark to be attracted to her. It's not like it's less like piney and uh, teenage, and it's just like there there's a reason for him to be attracted to her, and I I like that, and I think I don't know. I hope Lana figures something out because right. I like Kristen as a person and an actor. I agree. Yeah, three. Hey, Pop I think Bill Kristen friends. felt the same. This is Bree from Portland. First off, I'll have to say this episode kind of so-so. It's kind of goofy, but it does give us one of the most beautiful endings and one of my favorite ever endings to a Smallville episode. The chemistry between Erica and Tom is gorgeous, and I just want to know how much of that last scene was scripted versus how much was that just Tom and Erica being cute and good actors and having good chemistry and making it work. Thank you. Bye. I, I would say that the the scene itself was written, but they, you know, it's a, it's an unspoken ending. There's no, there's no lines at the end there. And I think that Eric and I, this is the beginning of our working relationship too, of just sort of, you know, sort of teasing each other because knowing that that would work with Clark and Lois. So it, it was fun. It was very respectful, but it's, a, I think this, I agree. This is one of the best endings and it's completely unspoken. Hi, this is Tatiana from Utah calling about the final scene of mm, season four, episode three, Assad, with Avril Lavigne playing as Lois Dunk's Clark. It is Avril it's Lavigne. probably, honestly, one of my favorite scenes in, like, all of television. What? <laughs> and I just want it to be known, <sighs> and I want you guys to appreciate how perfect that scene is. <laughs> it's just so fun. It's so cute. And I just wanted to know if you guys recognize the importance of Avril Lavigne on Clovis. I recognize this song. I thought it was very. Was she in the show? Very, uh, uh, well, her song. Canadian singer songwriter. They're you know they're shooting in Canada. Um, very angst. Yeah, like, uh, my, she's great. My my sister listened to a lot of Avril Lavigne, and by proxy, I did too. She's adorable. Um, yeah, and I mean the the theme of the song is pretty on the nose for Chloe. So much for my happy ending. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. John? Hey, Michael and Tom. This is John from Yorktown, New York. Tom, how much were you allowed to shoot the football scenes, and how much fun was it? Thanks, guys. I love you, John. What a nice, quick answer. Good question. Um, tons of fun. I wanted to do more, but like I said before, when it came down to the ball needing to get where it needed to be for the shot, they brought in doubles. But I loved it. I had a, I don't know, it's just a fun thing to do for me. Uh, bl- these are international folks. Text at the end of the facade episode when Lois throws the ball to make Clark fall into the water. Is it a throw by Erica herself? 
Or do they have somebody throw it? I'm sure. I don't, who knows? Judging from my reaction, I, I mean, I, I, I think I look surprised when it when it goes yeah, off. It, you did. it could have been we did it a couple of times and then she hit it or something. I don't know. But yeah. Christoph, with Eric Johnson returning this episode, do you have any fun stories with other cast members or guest stars who return to the show? Uh the guys from home the guy from Home Improvement's always fun when he came back. Um ATT. Jonathan Taylor Thomas, uh the one dude uh from Yeah. Jesse Metcalf. Yeah, Emmanuel Valje. I mean, it was always fun. The more they came back, the more you got to know him and you were just playing and um yeah thank you for the questions that was really great uh rosenbaum rating and now we'll go rosenbaum with uh rating. tom first to I, give it a no pleasant. i think you sh- i think you should go first it's not gonna affect mine i just i, I, think, you wanna, I think i'll go first all right i think it's a one i think it's all right it's good all i right. enjoyed seeing clark in a different light you see the banter you see the the moonlighting aspect i mentioned before i there's some fun in this it's not but it's not Rocket like science. you said, if this was a pilot, it would never work, but it would never be done like this as a pilot. So, you know. All right. Brian. Uh, heater for me. Wow. I, I just. I thought felt- you would have loved the Clark playing football stuff. Thought you would have. I mean, there, there's more of that this- next episode. I what just. Uh, oh, man. I just. This is not the show that I. Wa- like, if I would have watched this while I was yeah. acting on it. I would have been like, oh no. Well, I that's what I would have thought. From what I heard from you, you don't think it's a bad episode. You don't think it's a bomb, but you just weren't interested. So it sounds like a heater. Who, Ryan? To me. No, you oh, you're Michael. crazy. A heater for me? I I'm I'm working on a couple of bombs here. I'm gonna give this two bombs. Two bombs for this one. Because again, if I was watching the if I was watching these episodes while I was on the show. And I watched this, I would have been like, we go from such what I dark, doing? rich, great TV, cinematic, and to just a bunch of goofy shit. That's how I felt. I felt like this just was a juxtaposition of everything that I think Smallville is. I think this was just like, uh, it was just like, I would never watch this. Yeah, it just bothered me. I just think it was a lot of <laughs> plastic surgery. It was, it was, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it two you bombs, probably, guys. For those no, but just I, 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 and it would have been three bombs, maybe if it wasn't the dunk take and some nice moments between you and Lois. Because I just maybe I'll maybe I'll give it one and a half bombs because the next one might be worse. No, I'm gonna give it two bombs. Give, us, give yourself somewhere to go. Ryan's favorite scene, folks. Ryan's All right, let's let's just let's make this easy. Scene. All right. <clears throat> Hold on. Where was it? Uh, I know what it is already. Tom, you want to just both say the dunk the, the dunk scene and just call Let, it a day? The dunk scene. Let's I was just say thinking, the, yeah, I'm calling it dunk scene. Dunk scene. Ryan? Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's it. it. It's the only scene that's even <laughs> yeah. uh, worthy of saying. Great, we both get a point for the dunk scene. <laughs> uh, we love you. I love you. Sorry if I was negative, Nancy, but that's how I feel. And you, I hope you love that. Uh, you appreciate that I'm honest. That's it for the episode. Stick around next week and continue to show your loyalty as we get into season four, episode four, uh, Devoted. Let's take the discussion online. Let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast or at Talkville Pod. That keeps changing. Uh, show support for the podcast by joining Patreon at patreon.com slash Talkville. Really could use your help. And if you want more info like merch from the show or our hotline number, you can find all that in the description. Um, and uh, remember, folks, always hold on to Smallville. <laughs> And now it's time for the top tiers. Couldn't do the show without you. Uh, it's just obvious. Uh, without my patrons, without our patrons, Tom and I wouldn't be here. You keep the show going. You want it to keep going? Keep sporting. <laughs> we love you. Patreon.com slash Talkville. Here are the wonderful people. Nikki G, Leanne P, Raj C, Santiago M, Little Lisa, Thomas, The Leaf Blower, Shane W, Sophie M, Betsy D. I miss you, Betsy. Abby P. Abby. You've been here a while too. Ray Harada, Fatima T, Karen Apple M, 99 more, Lelani N, Brett G, always hold on to Smallville, Esteban G, Garrett W, Bob K, Knudsen, what's up? Kimberly L, Tom N, Jason W, Dreamweaver, Osama A, Glenda the Good Witch, Parisho, Glenda, Lana rhymes with Banana W, we love our Lana. And our Nancy D and our Brian G and our Sarah W, our 
Vancouver Grips, Anna M. How about Amanda R? For God's sakes. Teddy, one, two, seven. Michael P. Here's the pitch to Theo M. And a base hit up the middle. Ryan R. will take it from right field and throw to Jordan M. at second base. Here's the pitch by Randy B. Craig G. hits one deep. Karen P. is there. Jorel will come in to relieve pitch. And at the top of the third, it's Heather 4 and Greg 3. I made Talkville say butts. Brian H. up to bat. Maybe we should go to hockey. Eric K. takes the puck, passes it over to Kristen B. In the slot, Nanine W. Stephanie K. with his wrister. Oh, off the post. Darth Achilles makes a great save. Back around the corner it goes. Finky picks it up. Tanks it in the zone. Early is on time with the puck now. Passes it over to, damn, who's that? Jeanette E. now. Jeanette E. puts it up to the side. Right to the cross. David Dedman shoots. Oh, deflects wide. General Zob with a great save. Theodore takes the puck down the ice. Passes over to Big D. Big D in the corner now. Around the boards it goes. Doug R. picks it up. Passes over to the other fenceman. Carlos C. Tommy Z. Boston now with the puck in the middle. Throws in the slot to Kendall Emmerich. Got a Coriel score! How was that? That was good. Tanks it in the zone? I don't know. I messed it up. Is that a real thing? He doesn't say takes it. He takes it in the zone. Well, I thought you said tanks it in the zone. Yeah, I takes it. I, thought that was, I don't know. I don't know hockey that well. Yeah, it's I, all was, right. I was going with it. Mr. Home Arcade. Well, if it was golf. All right, Mr. Home Arcade's got about five yards. He's going to use the six iron. And, oh, it's a nice one. And Jesse C must be uh, worried about this now. Only one stroke off the leader, Claire M. D. Brown and Karen Era M here today at the golf course. I'll tell you the favorites are Jules M, Eldon Supremo, Leslie V, McBurts, and coming out of nowhere, Ginger Moose. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Christopher S. Uh, Michelle M, don't count her out just yet. Drew? Yeah, you know, we're here right now on the uh, ninth hole. Michael Kane doesn't blink is with me. Uh, we're talking with Sebastian F and Sarah Puss Cranky Pants, too. Uh, but first, Matthew and Lincoln B, how are you guys? Pretty good. Uh, good. That's good. The Coopers are here. Uh, they're here from uh, Salem, Massachusetts. Mary and Louise L here. Uh, check out the kid with the sombrero. <laughs> C. Geo. <laughs> Cindy C. Nikki L. Shannon Fofan. And Tina E. Matt Rick. Jen T. Randy S. Cassie B. Brad A. Felicia R. Danny M. Uh, J.S., Rachel D., Gingerous Prime and 8D. When you're rich, you aren't crazy, you're eccentric. Lex, Lex, Chicken Flower, Sammy Charmin, Carrie Ann, The Alexander Castle, Daryl E., Charlene A., Lady L., Spicy Chicken, Jenny B., Anna B., Monica T., Tom is my hall pass. Really? I guess I didn't make the, I think my invitation got lost in the mail. Jenna May C., Batman's Boxer Briefs, Samuel Daddy M., Cameron R., Eric M., Jeffrey K, Tony K, Andy S, Pip Kenobi, Pip Kenobi, Pip Kenobi, huh. Katya C, previously on Smallville, Cheru S, Geneva D, Matt C, Rosie is my hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> See, I made it. Depro, Segal, and Devon, Sejal, and Devon, Depro, Sejal, and Devon. Couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you so much for being here. As you can see, Tom couldn't be here today to read, but I hope you don't mind that I read your names and had some fun with them. And uh, we love you. We'll see you later.